All right, let's talk all things lamb. And in this video, we're gonna look at two specific and very popular cuts of lamb that you can cook on your barbecue at home, and that is the lamb shoulder and the classic leg of lamb. Now, although these cuts do come from the same animal, they both require a bit of a different preparation and a style of cooking on your smoker in order to get the very best results for your family and guests to enjoy. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between these two cuts. We're gonna talk about the preparation of the meat, the best way to cook them on your smoker or grill at home. And of course, we're gonna show you our final results. Now, be sure to stick around. And as always, ask any questions in the comments below if we miss anything in this video. All right, first up is our lamb shoulder. Now, the shoulder is a primal cut that includes the upper front leg and the shoulder blade. Now, because these muscles get a lot of exercise on the animal, the meat is tougher, but it tends to have a lot more flavor than say the loin or the hind leg. It also has a lot more connective tissue, veins of fat, and just depending on how your butcher prepares it, it may have a lot of bones because it may include uh, some of the ribs and part of the neck. Now, this one here is a supermarket bought one, so it's pretty clean. It's more really just like a shoulder blade, so there's a lot less of those bones. And as I mentioned, a lamb shoulder is full of flavor, so to maximize that flavor, we're gonna cook this with the bone in over a slightly lower heat than the leg, but for a lot longer period of time so that the meat simply falls apart and becomes pulled lamb. Now for this cook here, we're gonna be using this one on our Traeger pellet grill. All right, let's look at our leg of lamb now. Now, like shoulders, the legs also work pretty hard, although they're nowhere near as fatty as a lamb shoulder because it has a lot less connective tissue. It makes it the leaner of the two cuts. Now, a leg of lamb can be prepared two ways. You can debone it and then butterfly it uh, and put it onto your grill, or you can keep the bone in and roast it. Now, I definitely prefer to keep the bone in, although uh, the butterfly version will cook slightly faster. But in order to keep this leg moist and juicy, we're gonna cook this at a higher temp for a shorter period of time time than we are the shoulder. And today I'm gonna to show you how to cook this one on using your traditional Weber kettle. All right, so let's look at the preparation of our lamb, starting with the lamb shoulder, because obviously that's the one that's gonna need longer to cook. Now this is only a small lamb shoulder, it's all I could get at the time. It's only a little baby, 1.6 kilo. I usually like to get that sort of two to 2.3 kilo ones. Uh, but this will have to do for the time being. Now, this is a supermarket bought one. You can see here, it's really just like a shoulder blade. Now, the good part is there's not a lot of prep work to do on these. We're just gonna trim some of this hard fat off the top that's not gonna render, um, but we're gonna leave a little bit of the, the fat on there, which I don't mind for pulled lamb. Now, if you get this from the butcher, typically it will be a lot bigger and it's probably got more bones in it. It might have part of the neck um, and definitely will have some part of the ribs attached. Uh, and that's the same sort of preparation that we're gonna do here. Really just wanna trim off any of that hard fat, anything that's not gonna render down so we can get our rub to stick to the top of this and we can get a nice crust going. So let's go through and just trim off some of this fat now. So you can see here any any of these fatty bits on the top it's pretty good it's not a real hard fat but anything that's not going to render down. So as we said the shoulder does have a lot of connective tissue so this fat on top we don't really need there'll be plenty of fat through the cut itself which is going to help keep it nice and moist while we're cooking it. Just anything like that, any sort of hard fat. It's really not gonna render out. You just wanna get rid of that. Okay, so now we've done the top bit. There's not a lot to clean up on the bottom here, but just any big chunks of fat. I just wanna get rid of those because we do not wanna be eating that. All right, there you go. So we've spent a bit of time just trimming off some of that excess fat, really just the hard stuff. Don't spend a lot of time on it. Doesn't need to be pretty. We're gonna turn this into uh, pulled lamb anyway. So just trim that off both sides. Now it's time to apply our rub. So for this cook here, we're gonna use two different types of rubs, although they're both from the same brand. So we're gonna be using our Four Monkeys Home Base and we're gonna cover that with the Four Monkeys Lamb. So let's get our home base on first. We're gonna start with the bottom. Now the meat's pretty tacky. One of the questions I had in the last video was the non-use of a binder. Now, I don't really need to use a binder on a lot of these meats because if you get it on long enough, you can give it at least half an hour to set, you'll find you won't need the binder, but if you like to rub a little bit of oil over it, that's fine as well. So let's start with the home base now. I'm just gonna give that a bit of a light dusting. It's just our base rub. And this is a great combination of just really salt, pepper, bit of onion, bit of garlic. So we're just gonna go a bit lighter on that one. And then we're gonna come over the top with our Four Monkeys lamb rub. Now this one has great color once it starts cooking on the smoker. And we use this one plenty of times in competitions before. And it always does really, really well. All right, so we've applied our rub on the underside of the lamb shoulder. So I'm just gonna let that set 
for a moment before we flip it over and do the tops and the sides. So we wanna get a good coating all the way around. It's gonna help develop a really good crust and help just keep some of that moisture in the meat. So just while we're waiting for that to set and before I flip it, let's go outside, we'll set our tray up and get it ready to cook. All right, so we're gonna be cooking the shoulder first, and we're gonna be cooking that on the Traeger Ironwood 885, which we've already set up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna pop that in there and check on it about every hour or so, and we're looking for an internal temperature about 150 to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit probing, in which case we're gonna take it out and we're gonna give it a wrap, and we'll pop it back in and take it all the way through to about 204 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if I was to cook this on my Weber, I would set myself up with the snake method for my coals because we want that longer, slow cook with an even temperature. Cook either of these on any type of barbecue just using those temperature guides. So let's go outside. We're gonna see if the uh, Traeger's up to temp and we'll pop our lamb in. All right, so now it's time to start on our leg of lamb. Now our leg of lamb here is just a little 2.2 kilo store-bought uh, leg of lamb. So um, reasonable size leg, you can get smaller ones and they obviously cook a little bit quicker. So all we're gonna do here is just go around just give it a little bit of a light trim. So you can see there's this bit of skin on here and this is a bit of excess fat. We really just wanna take that off. You don't have to be super clean with it. It is a lean cut. So if we can leave a little bit of that fat on, that's a good thing, but we don't want too much on because it'll wash all our rub off and we won't create the bark. Things like that, you really don't wanna eat. So we're just gonna go around now, spend a couple of minutes just trimming that fat back just so you can start seeing that meat peek through. All right, so I've just spent a few minutes cleaning that leg of lamb up there. You can see I've got about a ball full of fat off the top of it, really. It's not a masterpiece, it doesn't need to be. Keeping a little bit of fat on there for such a lean cut's not a bad thing. On the bottom, I really didn't take any fat off. All I did was take off a little bit of that excess, excess skin, but leaving a little bit of protection on there because we're gonna cook it that side down. All right, now that we've prepared our leg of lamb, it's time to apply our rubs. And for this cook, we're gonna use a combination of two different rubs. The first rub as a base is gonna be Boar's Night Out, a white lightning, which is a great combination of salts and peppers and garlic. And then a rub over the top is gonna to be our uh, Butcher's Axe Hunter, which has specifically been designed for lamb and is an absolute winner. All right, so we're gonna apply our rubs now. So first of all, as we mentioned, we're gonna use the Boar's Night Out white lightning, and we're just gonna apply that, not a lot, just as a base. Okay, so we're just gonna pat that on. And then over the top of that, we're gonna apply our Butcher's Axe Hunter. All right, so we're just gonna let that sit for a moment. We're just giving that a bit of a light pat and then we'll flip it over and we'll apply the same type of rubs to the top. But while we're just letting that rest, we're gonna pop outside, we're gonna set up our Weber and get ready for this cook. With the setup, we put our two baskets on either side with a small about of uh, briquettes in there. And we're gonna use a wine barrel wood chunk to use for smoke on this particular cook. It goes great with lamb, really gives it that rich flavor. All right, so we've had our Weber running for a little while now and it's slowly dialed into to just under 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It's probably sitting around, somewhere around the 290-ish mark. So we've rubbed down the top side now of the lamb as well, so it's all ready to go. So we're gonna take this outside, we're gonna place it into the middle of the Weber and we're probably gonna let it sit there for about an hour, hour and a half before we come back and check it. All right, so we've brought our lamb shoulder in now. Now it's been on the Traeger for about three hours and you can see here we've got some nice pullback on the bone and the internal temperature hit that 155, 160 degree Fahrenheit mark, which is perfect. So the bark set pretty well on it. So now it's time to wrap it. So all we're gonna do is bring it in here. I've got a couple of small sticks of butter. It's gonna add a little bit of extra moisture to the meat. So when you wrap this up, you do wanna wrap this up nice and tight and try and get all the opening to the top because we're trying to create a boat. We don't want any of that nice liquid leaking out the bottom of the foil. We're gonna capture all that for our meat. So now that we've got that wrap back up, we're gonna pop that back into the Traeger. We'll put the internal probe back in and we're looking to let this go all the way to around about that 203, 200 to four degrees Fahrenheit and then we'll check it for tenderness. All right, it's been about two and a half hours now. So we did check on it about the hour and a half mark, hour 45. So we're just gonna lift the lid, have another look, see how it's going, but I reckon it's gonna be pretty close to being ready. Oof. And you can see great color, great bark. And if I check the internal temperatures, we're at about 149. Push it in a bit further, about 148, 149. That's right in the middle. That's 153 there. So 
hotter on the other side, 160. So I reckon that's pretty much done. Now, one thing with lamb, especially because of the bone, it's always good to take it out a couple of degrees shorter than where you want to aim for because it will continue to cook. The bone holds that heat. So it's definitely going to continue to cook the meat from the inside. So we're going to take this out now. We're just going to pop it in a tray and we're just going to wrap it and let it rest for about half an hour or so. Okay, so our lamb is finally done. It hit an internal temperature of about 205 and probably took another roughly hour and a half or so, maybe just shy of two hours to get to that point. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna rest it. But one tip I'll give before you rest your meat, especially if it's been wrapped up, you wanna just open that foil and let out some of that steam. Otherwise, it's just gonna to continue to cook in there and it's gonna turn into basically mushy meat, which we don't want. Oh, it smells great. I'm just gonna let some of that steam out. You see it's really pouring out. All right, so we're gonna let it steam out just for a moment. It's probing beautifully. So the internal temperature there, about 202, where we had the probe in the middle next to the bone there, it was up around 205, 207, so it's somewhere around there, but you can see there, pretty effortless, just to slide the probe in, so it's gonna pull apart quite nicely. We're gonna wrap this back up, and we're gonna place that into the cooler with a towel on top for, I don't know, somewhere between half an hour to an hour, and then we'll come back and we'll pull it. If we pull it right now, it's uh, super hot, but it'll probably just turn to mush. So we just want to let it tighten back up just a little bit. Okay, so we've let our meat rest for about 45 minutes or so now. So the first cut we're going to check out is our leg of lamb. So let's crack the owl foil back. Whoa, smells amazing. All right, so you can see here, beautiful bark set on the lamb leg. Um, probably only took two and a half hours, which is a bit quicker than I expected. I've had lamb legs similar sizes and they take, you know, three hours, sometimes four hours. So uh, but that's meat, and sometimes it's just a bit ready a bit earlier. So let's carve into this because it smells absolutely amazing. Beautiful. Got all the juices still running. And as we go through, that's only going to get pinker and pinker on each slice. And let's just try a bit because it smells amazing. Oh, super tender. You can see here, we've got great bark that formed on the outside of that lamb. So I didn't overly smoke this one. Um, I just didn't put that many chunks in. I could, probably could have gone a little bit more and we probably would have got more of that pink smoke ring around the outside, but that's fine. You can still taste that it's been cooked using those briquettes and that little bit of smoke that we hit it with earlier. And you can see here on every slice, still beautiful. Still plenty of moisture. All right, I need to stop eating this one because we've still got to get onto our lamb shoulder. Um, but as I said, whatever internal temperature you're looking for, try and pull it out a couple of degrees early because that bone is really, really hot. It'll continue to cook even while it's resting. Depending on how you like your lamb, there's lots of different ranges you can aim for. So we aim for that sort of early 150s. It's nice and pink and there's plenty of moisture still running out of it. So I'll put a temperature guide in the description below on the ranges for lamb all the way from rare right through to well done. Um, so you can refer to that guide if you like just to see how you'd like to cook your lamb. So now that we've done the lamb leg, which is nice and simple, we're gonna pull out the lamb shoulder. I'm gonna have a look at that one. All right, we're back and we've let our lamb rest for probably only about half an hour or so. Uh, but try to let it rest for anywhere, like I said, between half an hour to about an hour. So we're going to open it up now. You see we've retained plenty of that juice in there. Whew. And it's still hot, so we've got our gloves on and we've got our cottons underneath so that we don't burn our fingers. So the first thing we want to have a look at is this bone. You can see here, clean bone straight off the bat. So we removed our bone. Smells amazing, okay? And then all we're gonna do is just pull our meat and you can see here, just how easy it pulls apart. Super hot, you can see the steam coming off it. So that's why it's important just to let it rest. You see here, we get our other bone off. And from here, we're just gonna pull our lamb apart. So it's simple as that. Now you can use a couple of forks to shred it. But you see here, beautiful bits of lamb. I'm almost too scared to eat it because it's so hot. It just comes apart and, oh, delicious. Now one advantage of uh, pulling the meat apart while it's so super hot is you can really boost that flavor. So here's a little tip, grab the rub that you use. So in our case, our four monkeys lamb rub, just give it an extra little sprinkle over the top of the meat. And because it's so hot, 
that's just gonna disintegrate straight away. So just give that a mix through. All right, and just by doing that, that just really helped increase the flavor. We don't wanna put any sauce on this fantastic lamb. So we're gonna turn this into a number of things on lamb wraps, lamb tacos. You could do um, lamb sliders. There's lots of different options there. So now that we've pulled our lamb apart, I'm just gonna try it again with that little bit of extra rub. Oh, yeah. Highly recommend that you do that. Just add the rub to it. Like I said, it'll melt down in no time due to the heat. It just tastes amazing. So, all right, that's a pulled, um, pulled lamb. So it's come up really, really well. I'm really, really happy with that. It's even got a little bit of a, a tinge of a smoke ring on there. Now, just to recap with our lamb leg, we, uh, we gave that a light trim, just got rid of that uh, hard fat left a little bit on there. And we rubbed that down with our Balls Night Out white lining as our base rub. And then our Butcher's Axe Hunter over the top and then we set our Weber up. We had the baskets on either side, popped our lamb leg in the middle. Uh, the Weber was running at just, just under 300 degrees Fahrenheit and that leg of lamb there took about two to two and a half hours. Now, as I said in the video, sometimes those legs can take three, four hours. Uh, that's barbecuing, I guess. That one just cooked a lot quicker than even I expected, but great result nonetheless. Uh, we wrapped it up and we let it rest for about an hour or so. Now onto the lamb shoulder, we use both of our four monkeys. So we use our four monkeys home base and we use our four monkeys lamb rub over the top. We pop the shoulder in, we set the Traeger up at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. We let the shoulder run then there for about three hours in the smoke. It got to an internal temperature about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. We took it out, we wrapped it, we added a couple of sticks of butter. Uh, wrapped it back up in the foil, put, put it back in, and it probably took only about another hour and a half to get to around that 204, 205 internal temp. Uh, and as I said, normally those shoulders end up being a lot bigger than that. So allow a little bit extra time when you're wrapping it for it to get to that temperature, but that was only a pretty small one. And if you like any of these rubs, they are available to you if you're in Australia. Uh, link in the description below at Barbecue Trading Co. So that's it from us. Lamb's one of our favorite things to cook. Uh, you really can't go wrong with it. It's pretty forgiving. And like I said in the video, if you're gonna do the lamb shoulder on your Weber also, use the snake method to set up your coals. You really want that sort of five to six hour cook. So you're gonna need a, a longer consistent temperature to get it there but lamb shoulder also comes up fantastic on the Weber. So if you like this video, give it the thumbs up. Got any questions, throw them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and check out some of our other content. We've got other recipes, gear review, and of course, videos on barbecue competitions. So until the next video, we'll catch you then. Oh, so good.